soft pan if you would please. Uh, are you washed in the blood? 177. Sunday morning. I want to welcome everybody to the service A this morning. I want to thank everybody for being here, and I trust and pray that you'll be blessed for being in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's take this opportunity to open up the service with a word of prayer. And uh, Brother Frank, uh, would you lead us in prayer and open up the service in prayer for us, please? Thank you, Father. Thank you for this time to give us Good Sunday morning. Again, I want to welcome everybody uh, to the Sunday morning service. I hope everybody's having a wonderful week and uh, a blessed week and has enjoyed uh, Memorial Day uh, this past uh, this past week and had a safe and healthy time. I uh, hope everybody, when you came in, received a bulletin, just a couple of uh, uh, notes and prayer requests that I want you to get, uh, get up to date on, and then we'll receive a prayer request. If you notice inside the bulletin, and you see the announcements uh, there, and uh, uh, the 14th will be going over the financial report and on the 21st is Father's Day. And also uh, the last Sunday of the month, and we'll have this in uh, next uh, Sunday's bulletin, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. And I'm gonna get with Brother Larry this morning. And uh, you know, he teaches the active shooter drills and safeties for churches. And uh, we do have a uh, evacuation uh, plan put into place and everything. And we need to get those redisplayed since we're remodeling. We've not put those back up. Uh, but we need to go back over that, and I'm going to get with Brother Larry this morning to see what Sunday afternoon he could do this. And so we'll have that uh, in the bulletin of when he can make himself available. Uh, Brother Larry, you know, he doesn't like to talk. And so, <laughs> and so with that being said, uh, uh, I want to be... Uh, uh, I want to be sure that I give him an ample amount of time uh, to uh, go over that, amen? And so I'll get with him to see how much a lot of time that he would need. And so I'd, I would assume that we would start at either 4.30 or 5 o'clock, and then that will proceed the Sunday evening service. I hope you notice all of the uh, birthdays 
and anniver uh, birthdays and anniversaries uh, listed there. And uh, today uh, we have two anniversaries uh, to acknowledge today. Uh, uh, hopefully Billy and Lisa will be here for service uh, uh, for service B and everything. And uh, uh, they have a 28 year anniversary today. So congratulations to them. And Frank and Sue uh, is with us here this morning. And uh, Brother Frank and, and Sister Sue, today is 58 years of wedded bliss uh, for Brother Frank and Miss Sue. And so uh, uh, I'm sure if you ask them, uh, <laughs> you may get a difference of opinion, amen. Uh, but all I can say is this, is, uh, uh, you know, thank God for his grace. Grace is unmerited favor by definition, amen. If you want to see a picture of grace, just look at Sue. <laughs> and who she's had to live with for 58 years. And you can know that God's grace, amen, uh, works, amen, <laughs> and is efficient. And so uh, anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll sing to them here shortly and everything. But uh, congratulations, Frank and Sue, for 58 years. Uh, may the Lord bless you 58 more, amen. And so we appreciate them being here. <laughs> well, you, know, you just don't know, Brother Frank, don't know. But uh, anyway... Uh, uh, we're certainly thankful for them being here today and a special day for them, uh, likewise. I want to say thanks for the candy bars and uh, uh, the hand towel uh, that was left up here. I appreciate that in a definite way and appreciate everybody's uh, thoughts and encouragement and prayers in regard uh, to the upcoming surgery uh, this coming Thursday. I know that in the Lord's time, everything will work itself out and everything will be just fine. But I certainly appreciate the prayers, and one reason I think that I, I'm doing as well as I'm doing right now is uh, the prayers of God's people, amen. Mm -hmm. And so I certainly appreciate the prayers, and with that being said, um, uh, I want to get you up to date on some prayer requests. Uh, I'm sure everybody's been aware, if you've been watching the news at all, uh, if you've been watching news at all, everything that's been taking place uh, uh, in regard to the tragic death of uh, George Floyd. Uh, there's been several riots, and, uh, and in case you did not know or didn't hear about it, uh, there was an episode last night here in Hamblin County, and they had to call in some backup and uh, some extra resources. Uh, protests that started out peaceful uh, began to escalate, and so they had to call in some neighboring uh, uh, help uh, from surrounding counties and the Tennessee Highway Patrol and everything. And as far as I know, there was no, not any type of uh, death or any type of injury. Uh, but we certainly need to pray for uh, George Floyd's family. Uh, God only knows what they're going through uh, with, the loss of their, with the loss of their son and then everything that's taken place as a result of this. And so let's remember his family in our prayers and let's pray for our nation. Uh, 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 it's, just, it's, it's a tragic time in our nation. And uh, uh, beloved, we certainly need to pray for his family. Uh, we need to pray for our nation. Uh, uh, the devil is at work double, I do believe. Uh, I said when I first became a pastor here that the two of the devices that the devil will use uh, to, to, to destroy uh, a nation is that of religion and that of race. And beloved Jesus Christ tasted death for every man, right. regardless of his skin color. Right. And so beloved, uh, uh, every individual has a soul and we certainly need to pray for unity and we need to pray for peace. And uh, these tragic things that's taken place, we need to ask the Lord to give uh, our first responders and officers discernment uh, to make uh, uh, the right decisions and to uh, re be respectful of others' lives. And so there's a lot of things that could be said, but I think the best thing to do is just commit it to the Lord and ask God to divinely intervene and to restore peace and unity in our nation. We know what the scripture says, that a house divided cannot, cannot stand. And beloved, a nation divided cannot stand. And with this COVID-19 that's taken place, uh, 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 beloved, I believe with all my heart, and I said this in regard to the COVID, uh, our, nation, our nation is under judgment of God. Mm -hmm. Except if it were not for a remnant of God's people, I believe God's full wrath would be upon our nation. But thank God for the remnant that still trusts and believes and serves the one true and living God. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, our nation needs to repent and turn back to God. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be changed in our nation. So uh, please pray for our nation. Please pray for unity and uh, uh, pray for uh, uh, peace. Uh, Dr. Harmon's uh, uh, mom has a special request. Uh, Leslie McCracken is having a surgery. 
Uh, please pray for her and that all will go well with her surgery. Uh, pray for Brother Jimmy. He's uh, been out the last couple of weeks and he's got some physical needs. And uh, pray for the Lord's healing touch upon him and uh, especially the situation that he has a heart need. And so pray for uh, this physical need. He's got some other things that need to be treated, but because of the situation and physical need with his heart, they're not able to help him with his other things until this gets taken care of. And so pray for Brother Jimmy, if you would, for the Lord's healing touch upon him. Uh, Brother Troy had an answered prayer this past week. Uh, 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 some family reached out to him that he's not heard from in quite some time. And uh, that just uh, was answered prayer and that blessed his soul. And I believe the Lord's laying a foundation to build back some relationships in Brother Troy's family. So continue to pray for him if you would. Uh, also uh, pray for Brother Rick Rader. He's still at UT Hospital. Hopefully he'll be able to come home uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday, but he's still having lung difficulties. And uh, they put him on an antibiotic to treat this uh, bacteria and infection, and it seems to be helping. So we continue to pray for Brother Rick. And of course, pray for Tammy. Uh, Tammy will be traveling uh, out yonder way to the West Coast. Uh, she's going in search of Bigfoot, and she'll be away for quite some time. <laughs> uh, no, she's starting a new job uh, out West. And so uh, pray for Tammy. Uh, that the Lord would give her traveling mercies and that the Lord would use her to be a light and a witness and to be a help and encouragement to all those that she encounters. And so pray for safe traveling mercies and pray for good health and safety for Tammy while she's away. And also pray for Rory and Charlena. Uh, Tammy is there to help assist and uh, help take care of their physical needs. But uh, with her being away, uh, uh, the immediate assistance won't be there. So uh, pray for Rory and Charlena, pray for their health and well-being as well. And uh, good to see Ruth with us. Uh, continue to pray for Ruth and her spiritual needs and her family likewise. Uh, but at this time, uh, if you have some additional requests or maybe some updated requests uh, from uh, what's on the bulletin, I'd like for you to share those at this time. Does anybody have any uh, requests or updates that you'd like to share with the church this morning? Does anybody have? Yes, Carla. And my friend Barbara Beckner, she had her last chemo treatment. Amen. All right, let's pray for uh, Carla's friend, Barbara Butner. She had her last chemo treatment, and let's pray that this is the last one, amen, and uh, pray that the Lord would just provide a healing touch to her. And as I mentioned, it's good to have uh, Frank and Sue here with us this morning, and Brother Frank is a miracle. Uh, there was a point in time I did think Brother Frank was going to uh, uh, make it through, but uh, God touched him and healed him and raised him up, and he's alive and mean as ever. And so thank God for that. Amen. Uh, I love you, Brother Frank. You know that. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, God's done a, a miracle in his life uh, from where he was at. He had some severe physical needs, but God brought him through it. Amen. God's able, amen, with the Lord. Amen. All things are truly possible. Amen. All things are possible. And so uh, let's pray for Barbara for complete healing. Anybody else have any prayer requests? Anybody else? Uh, remember Brother Steve and Haley's family, they've suffered loss in their family the last couple of weeks. Uh, weeks. Uh, continue to pray for them. Yes, Brother Anthony. Oh, uh, Joe told me she's having some trouble with her sleeping and she stays up all night. And when it comes time to be up awake, she's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> just pray for her. And if you see her nodding, it's all right. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, well, Joe's got a birthday, I believe, at the end of this month, I believe on the 27th. And so let's pray for her sleep habits. I remember one time uh, I heard a preacher say that a gentleman went to the doctor and he said uh, he was having sleep problems. And the doctor asked him, when are you having trouble sleep? And he said, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, he said, uh, I'm sleeping in the morning, I'm sleeping in the afternoon, I'm sleeping at night and everything. I just don't know what's going on. <laughs> and so anyway, pray for Joe that, uh, uh, that this will get straightened out. Yes, Miss Sue. Uh, pray for our law enforcement that God will watch over them. Yes, yes. yes. God bless you, Sue, and uh, uh, let's pray for our law enforcement and all of our first responders um, with this COVID-19 and obviously everything that's taken place uh, in our nation with some of the protests and uh, these things taking place in our, in our, uh, our nation. Uh, we need to pray for everyone's safety and pray that unity and peace would abound. God bless you, Sue. God bless you. Anybody else have any prayer requests? Yes, Miss Ruth. God bless you, Ruth, and let's pray for her friend, 
Penny Miller. Uh, she had a, uh, a loss in family. And so let's pray that the Lord would be with the family during this time of loss. God bless Lord, you. Miss. We're all praying for you, Pastor Chris. Thank you for Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and the prayers are, are being felt already, and uh, I know this is just another step of faith that uh, I'll have to take and go through, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the Lord's uh, going to give victory. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. God bless you, Miss Ruth. Uh, Brother Jimmy, did you have your hand up? Yes. Well, Bert, uh, sir, you want to do uh, real well. He's doing good and everything. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And uh, this is Jimmy's brother. I shared this uh, a couple of weeks ago. He was going to have to have a procedure done. And praise be to God, the surgery went well, and he's recovering. And so we give the Lord the thanks and praise for this. God bless you, Brother Jimmy. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else have a prayer request or an update that they'd like to share? All right. How many of us have unspoken? I know we have unspoken requests. Uh, please uh, continue to pray for all of, the, uh, all of the written requests. And I do have two more. Uh, Shirley Ellison and, and Brother Troy both uh, requested prayer, and so please uh, continue to pray for them. Um, uh, pray for our nation. Obviously, there's a lot of turmoil uh, in our nation, and with all this that's been going on with the COVID-19, everybody's been on edge, and then other things, other tensions are, are taking place, and so it's a dangerous time for our nation, and so we need to pray that God would intervene, that revival would break out in our nation, and that our nation would repent and turn back to God. Amen. And so pray for our nation. Uh, pray for President Trump and all those in position of authority. Pray that the Lord would give them guidance and direction to make the right uh, decisions for our nation. And pray most of all that if any of these individuals are lost, that they'd be saved. Amen. Amen. That they'd be saved before it's eternally too late. Uh, continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel and that our nation will always be a friend of be an ally to Israel. Uh, pray for our military. Uh, that are serving our nation. Uh, pray for them that the uh, Lord would keep them safe and out of harm's way. And if they are engaged in battle, wherever it may be, that the Lord would grant them victory. And so please pray for our military and uh, continue to pray for the upcoming election. Uh, election taking place this fall. We need to pray for God's intervention and direction in regard to the upcoming election uh, later on this year. And of course, uh, again, the COVID-19 it's still with us, and so let's pray uh, that the Lord would divinely intervene and stop the spread of this uh, dreadful disease, and that the Lord would give wisdom and uh, uh, to the doctors and scientists that they've come up with a vaccine to treat this. And so let's pray for uh, the situation there, and uh, continue to pray for all of our missionaries. Uh, pray for them that the Lord would, would bless them and keep them safe, and that fruit may abound to their account, that souls would be saved. For the cause of Jesus Christ. All right, if, if no one else has any other prayer requests, let's take this opportunity now to go to the throne of grace and let's ask the Lord to bless all of these requests this morning and then we'll take our song list and stand and sing and wave and welcome one another to the service. I'm praying and I, 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 I just feel, feel that hopefully here in a couple of weeks we'll be able to get back on Sunday school and uh, uh, one morning service and get back to, to, to normal. And so uh, please make that a matter of prayer. But at this time, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless all of these requests. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house to worship thee in spirit and truth. Father, we are thankful for the many blessings you've already freely bestowed upon us this morning. We are thankful for the breath of life you've given us to enjoy thy creation and for the health and ability uh, to be in your house, uh, to come together to worship thee and fellowship one another uh, with one another dear lord as uh, uh, believers in christ and lord we just give you thanks and praise dear lord for uh, your faithfulness and your love and your mercy and your grace and for all the things that you do for us uh, lord we just give you uh, many thanks and many praise and glory to the name that's above every name father you truly are the one that is deserving and lord we just give you thanks and praise for all that you do for us and lord i pray heavenly father dear lord for all of the many requests that have been shared here today. We are a needy people, but we also know that there's nothing too hard for you and that with you all things truly are possible. And Lord, I pray for each and every request that's been shared here today. Father, for those that are lost, Lord, I pray that you convict their heart of sin, that you draw them into yourself and that they'd be saved before it's eternally too late. 
And for those that are backslidden and out of fellowship with thee, I pray that they come to their senses, that they leave the far country, and that they would come back to thee and be restored back into the fellowship that you desire to have with your children. And Father, I pray that you'd give us a, a vision and a burden, dear Lord, for uh, this world, uh, this lost world, and people that are dying without uh, uh, knowing uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, Father, with everything that's taken place in our world, we know that the uh, rapture of the church could take place at any time. And Father, I pray that we would be busy in your vineyard, dear Lord, and labor in your field, dear Lord, and tell others about Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray heavenly, Father, dear Lord, for uh, George Floyd, uh, uh, his family, dear Lord, uh, uh, the, the, the pain and the heartache that they're going through and all these circumstances that have uh, raised, uh, dear Lord, from his tragic death. Uh, Lord, I pray for his family, that you would be with them during this time. And Father, I pray for all those that's been affected by his death. Uh, Lord, with uh, all these uh, protests and things taking place in our nation, uh, Father, I pray that uh, we'd all be reminded that Jesus Christ died and tasted death for every man. And Father, that we wouldn't look at uh, uh, the, the circumstances and the tensions in our nation and look at each other, but that we would look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and that peace, dear Lord, and, and unity would abound in our nation, and that we would draw together, dear Lord, and that, uh, uh, that we would just turn our eyes upon you, Father. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, those that are sick and afflicted and need a touch of body, you are the great physician. All the healing comes from thee. And Lord, I pray for uh, each and every one that's uh, sick and afflicted, dear Lord, I pray for your healing touch upon each and every one, whether it be from the COVID-19 uh, to uh, 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 stomach issues or cancer or whatever the case may be. Lord, we pray for your healing touch upon each and every one. And Father, I pray uh, uh, for those that may be getting ready to undergo a procedure or surgery, I pray that you'd use this to provide healing to their body. Please guide the doctors and surgeons' hands as they perform the operation that it would be successful, that there not be any difficulties, uh, uh, Father, and that you would use this to provide healing to their body. And Lord, I pray for those families that have recently lost loved ones. Uh, Father, the void that's been left with the passing of a loved one, I pray that you fill that void with your love, your peace, and your comfort. And Lord, I pray uh, for uh, all the requests, dear Lord, whether they be spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, uh, uh, employment, uh, whatever it is, Lord, we pray that you bless each and every one. And Father, we pray especially for Tammy, uh, dear Lord, as she travels, that you give her protection while she travels and watch over her while she's away and bless her as she starts this new chapter in her life. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, dear Lord, for our nation. I pray for President Trump and all of those in a position of authority. I pray for our law enforcement and our first responders, uh, all those that have put themselves in harm's way to try to protect and keep others safe. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless them. And Lord, I pray uh, uh, for President Trump that you just give him guidance and uh, wisdom, dear Lord, to lead and uh, direct our nation. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, uh, 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 for our military. I pray that you would bless them wherever they may be. Lord, we th we're thankful for our military and for their service and their sacrifice to our nation. And Lord, if they're engaged in battle, that you would grant them victory wherever they may be at. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for Israel, and I pray that our nation will always continue to be a friend and be an ally to Israel. And Lord, I pray for the upcoming election. I pray that thy will be done. And I pray that the individual placed in the office would be one that would lead our nation in truth and in righteousness. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, uh, for all of our missionaries, wherever they may be at, that you keep them safe and out of harm's way. And for each one that's preaching and teaching the truth of God's word, I pray that fruit may abound to their account, that souls will be saved for the cause of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray now that uh, you be with us as we go throughout the service. I pray that you bless the singing, the music, uh, the giving, the preaching, everything that's said and done would bring honor and glory to thy blessed name. And if there is one here today that's in our midst, that's lost and without Christ, Father, I pray that before they leave here today, they'll come forward and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do because we're asking and believing in the name that's above every name. For it's in Jesus' name we do ask it all. And amen. And at this time now, I'd like to invite you to stand and take your song list and let's sing and wave and welcome one another to the service.
You might get one for good. Yeah. All right, turn to page 305, The Old Rugged Cross. what Jesus did on that old rugged cross. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Well, again, I want to welcome everybody to the service. At this time, we'll go ahead and receive this morning's offering. And so, brethren, if you found your place, uh, come on forward this morning, and uh, we'll go ahead and take up this morning's offering. Please be faithful to the Lord in your giving. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And so at this time, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the offering. And Brother Anthony, if you would, would you lead us in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the offering, if you would, please. Most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, 
Lord, we're so blessed to be back in the house. Yes. Lord, I want to say a prayer for the ones that are here and pray for the ones that couldn't make it here. Lord, to take this offering and use it for your, yes. yourself, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 to the message this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about manna time. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the bread of life. We're going to talk about manna this morning and how Jesus Christ is a type or a picture of manna that was given to the Israelites in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at that here shortly by the grace of God. Uh, but uh, before we get into uh, uh, the message uh, uh, this morning, uh, we want to take this opportunity to acknowledge anybody that maybe had a birthday this past week. Uh, anybody had a birthday this past week? Uh, anybody have a birthday? Maybe we just don't have record of it. All righty, it doesn't look like any birthdays. How about anniversaries? Uh, how about anniversaries? All right, Brother Frank and Sue, y'all's anniversaries today, correct? And everything. And so, uh, how many years now? 58? All right, anybody else got an anniversary that's with us here? Anybody else? All right, well, it looks like Frank and Sue our anniversary couple today. And so church on three, I want you to help me sing happy anniversary to brother Frank and sister Sue. 58 years of wedded bliss. And you know what? They're still on the honeymoon. Amen. And it only gets better after this, right? Amen. <laughs> and so church on three, now help me sing to Frank and Sue happy anniversary. One, two, and three. Happy anniversary to Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Let me get the deluxe tree. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Frank and Sue. God bless you all. God bless you all. All right, uh, does anybody have a testimony that they'd like to share this morning? Anybody have a testimony that they'd like to share? Maybe an answered prayer you've had this past week, a special word? Yes, Miss Ruth. I would just like to thank God for my salvation, first of all. Amen. And That's good. Being with me and my family during this, this terrible time that, that we're going through. I, I don't know how people even try to make it without the Lord. He's my anchor. He's my everything. Amen. So I, I couldn't make it without him. And on behalf of my family and myself, thank you all so much for your love and prayers during this time. We really appreciate that. Amen. Amen. God bless you, uh, Miss Ruth. I continue to pray for Ruth and her family. Uh, her mom and dad has some severe physical needs, and uh, Ruth's trying to help with that. And plus, Ruth has some needs herself, spiritual needs and everything. And so pray for Miss Ruth and pray the Lord to be with her and her family. God bless you, Ruth. God bless you. Anybody else have a word of praise, a word of thanks? Our Lord is the anchor, amen? He's our shield, our buckler. He's our everything, praise be to God. All right, if no one else has a, a word, does anybody have a song this morning that they'd like to sing? Anybody have a song? Tammy, you have a song for us? All right, all right. And so Tammy's going to sing for us. And this may be one of the last times that she gets to sing in person for us. And so pray that the Lord would bless Tammy. Uh, as she sings for us this morning, that he'll give her that anointing and uh, pray for her as she travels. And uh, we'll say a little bit more about that at the end of the service here shortly. Is that the one? You sure? All right, no, all right. All right. You, 
you got you got power. You're good to go, Tammy. God bless you. <clears throat> bless her, Lord. Bless her. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go? That's right. Amen. Sing it. That's right. Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Yes. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Yes, he's our best friend. Where Amen. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind and I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Yes, that's right. Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a <coughs> refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Yes, amen. Amen. God bless you, Tammy. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. God bless you, Tammy. Amen. Anybody else have a song this morning? Anybody else? Chris, have you got a hymn that you want to share with us this morning? Yes. All right, and so all right, pray for Miss Chris that she has a hymn that she's going to share with us this morning. Mm -hmm. say if you're here this morning when the roll is called up yonder that you'll be there can I hear an amen amen amen, amen. and so I'll tell you uh, it's a, a wonder and a joy to be saved amen and to be a child of the king amen I appreciate that miss Chris God bless you 
Well, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, Exodus chapter number 16 for our text. Exodus chapter number 16. Now we're going to look at uh, manna this morning as being a type of Christ. Now God give uh, the Israelites uh, manna to help sustain them and to help strengthen them, to supply them with nourishment. And uh, this manna came from heaven. It came directly from God and it was a gift. And so with that being said, uh, hopefully we can already see some typology uh, and some type of Jesus Christ being here in regard to manna. And we're going to look at that uh, this morning as manna being a picture of Christ. And then we're going to look at some characteristics of manna this morning by the grace of God. Exodus chapter number 16, verse number 1, the word of God tells us, And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for he brought us forth into this wilderness to kill, the whole, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will bring bread from heaven, uh, uh, from heaven for you, and the people should go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel at even, Then you shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that your murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto Aaron, saying unto the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the land. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, uh, of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at evening the coils came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for the testimonies that we've heard, for the special music and singing that we, uh, we've heard. And Father, we are thankful for your word, uh, for the instruction and truth that we receive from thy word. And Father, now as we do look to the bread of life this morning, I pray that you would give us spiritual food from heaven. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that all of us here would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word that we'd be closer drawn to thee. And Father, that we would learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee this morning. And Father, I pray that you'd help me as I preach. Lord, I pray that you'd give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, help me to be able to preach the truth in love. Lord, I pray now that you just strengthen my voice, help me during this time. And Lord, if there's one here today that's lost and without Christ, Father, I pray that they would come forward and receive that bread of life, receive the gift of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord and be saved today before it is eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. And we'll go ahead and thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we do ask it all. And amen. And notice here, uh, uh, as we've read the text uh, here this morning, uh, it's been a couple of months uh, since uh, the Israelites have left the land of Egypt and come out of bondage out of Egypt. And it uh, seems like the Israelites are basically like a, a, a typical Baptist congregation. 
It doesn't take long till they're dissatisfied and they begin to murmur and begin to complain. Uh, beloved, uh, the fact of the matter is God had delivered them and proved himself with a great deliverance and a great exodus from the bondage of the land of Egypt. But they began to murmur and complain. And it had been better for us to have stayed in Egypt and die by the hand of the Lord. At least we could have been fed and had our tummies full. Uh, beloved, that's why the Bible tells us that we need to be content with the uh, things that God gives us. His sufficiency is all that we need. Amen. Amen. And God gives us exactly what we need. Uh, but beloved, uh, they begin to murmur and they begin to complain. And by the way, uh, when you murmur and when you complain, whether it's in your heart, uh, whether it's out loud with your mouth, or whether you write it in a text or a tweet or put it on Facebook, you can rest assured that God hears your murmuring and your complaining. Yes, he, he takes good and careful and detailed notes in regard to this. And he heard the Israelites murmuring and complaining, and he said, my glory is going to appear in the land. I'm going to prove myself to you again. And I'm going to feed you with fowl in the evening. And I'm going to give you manna in the morning. And so we get to this portion of scripture here now uh, where uh, uh, the manna is upon the ground. And again, manna is a, a picture of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in the uh, New, uh, New Testament Gospel of John, as the Pharisees were trying to uh, uh, corner Christ, if you will, and uh, and uh, discredit him and his deity. Uh, they accused him of blasphemy because Christ said, I and my father are one. He made himself equal to God. With this uh, set the religious crowd, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, it set them on fire. And now they're uh, trying to debate with Christ and uh, uh, discredit his deity. And in John chapter 6, verses 31 through 35, the word of God tells us, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am. And beloved, he is that great I am, amen? Uh, for whatever need you have in your life this morning, Jesus Christ is that I am. Amen. He can help you with your physical needs. He is the great physician. He can help you with your financial needs. He can help you with your spiritual needs. He can help you with your emotional needs. He can help you if you're uh, 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 discomforted this morning. He is the God of all comfort. He is the great I am. Praise be to God. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And later on again in John chapter 6, verses 48 through 51, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and get this and not die. Praise be to God. When you get saved, he gives you eternal life, praise be to God. And you're alive evermore in Jesus Christ, praise be to God. Amen. Now, beloved, one day this body of flesh will return back to the ground from whence it came. But praise God for this promise that he gives to the believer to be absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord, to be alive in his presence forevermore. Praise be to God. That ought to bring joy and comfort to our souls this morning. Praise be to God. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread. And praise be to God. He conquered death in a grave. He is alive and at the right hand side of the Father and ever liveth to make intercession for you and I. Praise be to God. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eateth this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And beloved, he did taste death for every man. Well, as we go back to our text, let's pick up in verse number 14. Let's look at some characteristics of the man. Here we have Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that uh, God is a trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. Uh, beloved, Jesus Christ... Uh, was before the world was ever created. He was there when the foundations of this world were uh, created. 
And all throughout time, he was there in heaven to that appointed time that he came here to this earth, the incarnate God, God in the flesh. And he walked here upon this earth for some 33 years, the very earth that he created and died the agonizing death on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood that you and I may be reconciled back to God the Father through his death, burial, and resurrection. You talk about an act of humility, leaving the glorious grandeur of heaven to come here to the earth that he created. That takes some humbleness and some humility, does it not? And notice here in verse number 14 in regard to manna. Notice here a couple of characteristics mentioned here in verse 14. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold the face of the wilderness that there lay a small round thing. Notice first of all that it was small. It seemed like it was insignificant. And here we have the King of kings and the Lord of lords leaving the glorious grandeur of heaven to come here to this earth that had been defiled by man. And he came here to this earth and humbled himself and went to the cross of Calvary for you and I because he loves us so much. Praise be to God. This speaks of the humility of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He is the living Word. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 3. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And so he was there with the Father when the earth and the world and the universe and the galaxies were created. Again in Colossians chapter 1 verses 16 and 17 tells us, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things. Did you get that? All things. I think that takes care of the evolution theory. I think that takes care of the Big Bang theory. I think that takes care of the orangutan theory. That takes care of the alien theory. All things were created by him. Uh, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by, by him all things consist. And we see here in John chapter 1 verse number 14. And the word, talking about the incarnate God, God in the flesh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. In other words, he humbled himself, small, insignificant, if you will, it seems. But he made himself of no reputation and took up on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And beloved, aren't you thankful for the humility and the humbleness of Jesus Christ? That he loved us so much that he humbled himself and that he came here to this earth, the very planet he created. And he died on the cross of Calvary for you and I. Uh, beloved, if that's not a demonstration of agape, of God's type of love for you and I, I don't know what is. And beloved, God demonstrates his love for you and I each and every day. Now, there are people that tell me, uh, God doesn't love me, preacher. Uh, if God loved me, this wouldn't happen, that wouldn't happen. Let me tell you something. You're alive and you're breathing and you have a chance to turn to God and ask God for forgiveness and be saved. God loves you. He cares for you. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, great are the mercies and the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We should rejoice for what God does for us each and every day. Yep. Notice here the text tells us a small, round thing. You notice the circle it has no beginning. It has no end. It signifies eternal, eternity, if you will. In John chapter 8, verse number 58, Jesus said to them, again, he was talking to that religious crowd, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, <laughs> I am Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always been in existence. 
Beloved, don't ask me to explain that to you. My mind cannot comprehend that. But I believe it with all my heart and all my soul. Amen. I believe it. You can look outside at the sun, the sun, uh, the stars, the clouds, the beautiful sky, the trees, the lakes. You look at how our own human body uh, works and operates and look at all of creation and know that this didn't happen by chance or by accident, that there is a divine creator. And beloved, these people that uh, believe in evolution and aliens and orangutans and all this kind of stuff, let me tell you something, their eyes are deceived to the truth of Jesus Christ. God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created all things. He is that great I am. Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 25, in regard to the circle and its signifying eternity. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 25, the word of God tells us, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost. <laughs> Aren't you glad that you're saved eternally? That the devil can't rob your salvation. No one can steal it. You can't lose it. You can't misplace it. You're saved. And in Jesus Christ, praise be to God. Whereby, or wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that, uh, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Notice here in verse number 31, the color of the manna. It's white, which signifies purity. Signifies purity. Notice here in verse number 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like a coriander seed, white. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Notice the color, white, pureness. He was that lamb without spot, without blemish. There's only one ever to walk upon this earth and never commit sin. And that was Jesus Christ. Now, beloved, I've heard some others profess that, that they've committed no sin. And the exact moment that they make that, I tell them you just started right then. <laughs> you told your first lie. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, he was the only one to ever live here upon this earth and not commit sin. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 22 records, Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 5, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 26, For such an high priest be, uh, for such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, beloved, he is that sinless, spotless lamb of God. The pureness of Jesus Christ. He satisfied and met the demands of the law. And notice here the taste of it. It was sweet. Does anybody in here like candy? Anybody in here like honey? I see a few people nodding their hand. And I tell you what, uh, I like sweet things. But I tell you what, you know something that's sweet? It's our position, our life, and our walk with Jesus Christ. And beloved, for you and I as his children, our walk with Jesus Christ ought to be sweeter each and every day. Praise be to God. In Psalm chapter 34, verse number 8, the word of God tells us, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, verses 2 and 3, as newborn babes to desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Uh, beloved, have you experienced the sweetness and the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, beloved, I believe all of us can say that this morning. He's been good to each and every one of us. All throughout the week when I'm working, I go into different places of business and I encounter a lot of different people. And uh, as a formality and as by means of just in general conversation, most of the time, most of the time, people will ask me how I'm doing. And I would invariably say about nine times out of ten, my response back to them is better than I deserve. God's been so good to me. If he didn't bless me with anything else from this second forward, he's already given me more than I ever, ever deserved. 
He's been so good to each and every one of us, has he not? And beloved, we've all experienced the sweetness and the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Notice here in chapter 16, verses 16 through 18, notice here the sufficiency of the manna. In verses 16 through 18, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet, uh, when they did meet it with an homer, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. How about that? There was no waste. Everybody had exactly what they needed. Praise be to God. Isn't that just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Uh, beloved, he, he doesn't promise us that he'll give us all of our wants, but he does promise us that he will take care of our needs. Praise be to God. And beloved, I know that there is poverty in this nation, but beloved, the poorest individual, the poorest family in America is wealthy considered to some of other nations in these historic world countries. Uh, beloved, even some of the poorest families in America have two or three changes of clothes and have a couple of pairs of shoes and eat one to two meals a day. You go to some of these other nations and the only clothes that these individuals have is what they're wearing. And they may or may not eat a meal that day or for days. And yet we murmur and complain. We've gotten spoiled and we've taken for granted the goodness of and the sweetness of Jesus Christ. Beloved, we need to be appreciative and thankful for God's goodness and for his supply and meeting our needs each and every day and for what he gives us. We should be thankful. Uh, the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 16, verse number 35, and the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. They eat manna until they came to the promised land. Uh, beloved, you and I have spiritual manna in the form of God's word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And one day, when we're absent from the body and present with the Lord, we're going to be with that living word, praise be to God. But this written word that we have is sufficient until we get to the promised land. Amen. It's sufficient for us. And so the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. Now notice this, but our sufficiency is of God. Now, beloved, the only reason that you and I are breathing this morning is by his grace. The only reason that we're alive this morning is by his grace. The shirt on our back, the shoes on our feet, the food that we have in our pantry, it's by his grace and his goodness that he's given this to us. Yeah, right. Now, beloved, be thankful for his sufficiency. And then, beloved, notice all, you know, the manna was not to be tampered with. You know, it's getting close to canning season, and I hope by the grace of God that I can do a little bit more canning this year than I did last year. Now, last year, just did not have the desire to can. I did a little bit, but not a lot. And uh, this year, we've already took inventory of the jars and the mixes, and getting ready to get this last surgery behind us, we're ready to start canning. And when we can, I like to change recipes and change things around a little bit to change the taste. And beloved, when it came to manna, and manna is a type of Christ, manna being bread, the bread of life, this is what we have is the word of God, it's the bread of life, it's the written word that we have here. And beloved, the manna was not to be tampered with. In uh, Numbers chapter 11, verse number eight, and the people went about and gathered it and ground it in milk, and beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cake of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. 
How about that? Now, in its original text, it was sweet. It was good to eat. Uh, beloved, there's a picture here when it comes to the Word of God. Uh, beloved, be thankful for this King James Bible that we have. Mm -hmm. And beloved, the Word of God is not to be tampered with. There's nothing that we need to add to it. There's nothing that we need to take away from it. It don't need to be retranslated. It simply needs to be reread. Because, beloved, when you start tampering with the Word of God and all these other translations that are out there, it changes the taste. It changes the meaning. And, beloved, we just need to stand upon the truth of God's Word and just cling to this old King James Bible and feed upon the true word of God. Amen. God did not mean for the man to be tampered with. Because when you tamper it, it changes. And beloved, that's what all these other translations are out there. When you start tampering with the word of God, it changes the meaning. It changes the deity of Christ. It changes the truths of God's word. And so you can call me old-fashioned. You can call me whatever you want to. I ain't changing and if these other people change and they go to other translations, that's their business. I'm just going to stick with King James. Amen. And so it was not to be tampered with. And guess what? In our text, and I say this in closing, where did they receive it? Who did it come from? It was a gift from God in heaven. And beloved, that's the way salvation is. It's a gift from God in the form of his only begotten son. Jesus Christ. And Exodus chapter 16, verse number 18, and when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Now, beloved, if the man is going to do you any good, you've got to receive it. You've got to feast upon it. And beloved, if there's anyone here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the word of God tells us, behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Why don't you receive that free gift, that free pardon of sin, and come forward today and receive that bread of life. Receive that gift of salvation. And by faith, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved before it's eternally too late. James chapter 1, verse number 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, beloved, God wants you to be saved today. Amen. And so at this time, Chris, if you'll make your way up to the piano. I'd like to invite everybody, if you would, please to stand. Everyone's standing, everyone's heads bowed, everyone's eyes closed. I want to ask a question here this morning. Maybe there's someone here today and the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to your heart and you're here and you've never been saved or you're not for sure. Heaven will be your home for eternity. And friend, if you're here this morning, you've never been saved or you're not for sure. Heaven will be your home for eternity. I'd like for you to raise your hand at this time and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to call you out. Uh, I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. But I certainly am going to pray for you. Anybody like that? Say, preacher, pray for me. Anybody like that? All right, I'm speaking to saved people now. Say, preacher, when you pray, would you pray for me and my family? Me and my family have many needs, and the Lord knows all about them. And when you pray, would you include me and my family in your prayers? Would you put your hand up this time? God bless you. I see those hands all over the auditorium. God bless you. I see those hands. Dear Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that were raised. You know the needs of your people. And Lord, I pray for each and every person, each and every family that's here this morning. I pray that you would bless in a special and mighty way. And for those that could not be here, you know their needs, you know their circumstance. And Father, I pray that you would bless them wherever they may be at. And Lord, I pray now that you would bless this invitation time. Have your will and way, for it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And now with the heads bowed and eyes closed, if you need to do business with the Lord this morning, I invite you to come as Chris plays. If God's dealing with your heart this morning, the altar is open. Obey the Lord this morning. to help 
Will you, lady? Casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. See you, Tammy. I'd like for you to come up here real quickly, and uh, we've got a surprise for you here. And uh, let me go back here real quick. Uh, Carl, will you come operate the camera and make sure we get uh, Tammy here on, on camera and, and help out there? Uh, everybody come on in. Uh, just maintain a good social distance, if you would, please, as you come in. services here just for a second. Uh, today is going to be Tammy's last Sunday with us uh, indefinitely. We do not know uh, we do not know when she's going to be able to return back to us and everything, but uh, we're praying this is the Lord's will for her. She travels out west and starts this new chapter in her life. And Tammy, uh, we're going to miss you. We love you, girl, and we're certainly going to miss you here. Uh, we know that you may not be here in body, but we know that you'll be here in spirit. And we may not be there, anybody, but we'll be there in spirit with you as well. And we want to give you these flowers. And we didn't know you were wearing yellow today, so how about that? The Lord worked that out. And this is from the, the kids. And this from is from the children. The Teachers have the biggest hearts. We want to give that to you. And Tammy, uh, uh, because of the unusual circumstances, I've tried to get as many signatures as I possibly could. But here's a card for you. Uh, and everybody's... Uh, uh, Wished you well in the card and, and signed it. That's here. And then here's a gift from our church to help you with some expenses along your way. And Tammy, I want to say that uh, uh, we're going to miss you and we love you very much. And we're honored to have you part of our church family. And we're certainly going to miss you. We love you, girl. Oh, I love all of you all, especially Christy. Yeah. It's so helpful for Carla, Sue, Rhonda. Well, we're, I, I don't deserve any of this. Uh, uh, well, we, we love you, Tammy, and uh, uh, we just wanted to say thanks, and we appreciate you, and that our hearts and prayers are with you. And so uh, uh, what I'd like to do at this time is I'd like for everybody to stand, if you would, please. And if you're here in service A, I know that you'll be dismissing and leaving. If you're staying for service B, after you go through and, and uh, 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 tell Tammy uh, uh, good luck and tell her that you love her, for service B, if you'll just find your place, uh, we'll start the service up here in about, uh, about let's say, 10 minutes or so and everything. But I want everybody to come by and everything. I'll try to work it out to have as much people here for service A and B to tell Tammy goodbye and that we love you. And Tammy, we do love you and we certainly miss you. And so I'm going to dismiss in a word of prayer and then I'd like for everybody to come by and uh, uh, wish Tammy the best as she starts this new chapter in her life. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful, dear Lord, for 
our dear friend, our dear sister, Tammy, dear Lord. We're thankful for this opportunity that you've given her. Father, we ask and pray for your many blessings upon Tammy. Please grant her traveling mercies. Please grant her good health. And Father, I pray that you would use Tammy, dear Lord, to be a light and be a witness. And for uh, the new friends and new people that she will meet, Lord, I pray that she would be a light and a witness and tell those about Jesus Christ and use her to bring honor and glory to thy name. Use her to be a vessel of honor unto thee. Lord, we thank you for Tammy. We love her. And Lord, we ask and pray your hand of protection and blessing upon her. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And amen. Love you, Tammy. God bless you. And at this time, come by and, and, and talk with Tammy.